Stand by because I want to bring in now Chris Daw QC, who is a barrister, uh, broadcaster and author of Justice on Trial, who agrees that Shamima has been brainwashed. And Mesa Gifford, a human rights activist and anti-ISIS campaigner who quit his job as a trader in London to join a Kurdish group fighting the terrorist group in uh, Syria. Great to have you here. You've obviously been listening to this conversation. Mesa, where do you stand on this? Well, my sympathy uh, lies entirely with the people of Syria and Iraq who have seen their homes, their entire country brutalized by ISIS. Um, I agree with MI5 when they describe Shamima as a real and credible threat. Um, and uh, I think we've all been warned by the w words of uh, Sajid Javid just this morning uh, when he quite forcefully uh, rejected any notion that what we've done in the case of Shimon Begum was in any way inappropriate. At the end of the day, the British public have to come first. And um, uh, unless we actually deal with the problem of returning jihadis at source in Syria and Iraq, um, we are at real risk of many more people, apart from Shimon Begum, coming back to the UK. But Chris Dor, you say actually Mace is wrong. Shamima Begum is a victim and we should be treating her like a victim. Why? Well, she, anyone who has a 15 year old daughter or indeed a 15 year old son knows that at that age, they are utterly incapable of making sensible choices for themselves. And when grooming gangs, which ISIS was a, a, a prime candidate and a prime example of, of the most extraordinary forms of uh, manipulation and grooming of young people and young women in particular, when they get involved with children of that age, just as when drug dealers get involved with 15 year olds or indeed sexual groomers get involved with 15 year olds, they do all sorts of things which are extraordinarily damaging to themselves. And the person who suffered the most in all of this is Shamima Begin. Begin, she's a young woman who's lost three babies who've died. Have we got no human sympathy or no human joined mercy? a terrorist group. She joined a terrorist organization. But she knew that ago, they were bombing this country. What did you do at 15? We at 15, we didn't join a death cult in the desert. So I'm sorry. Well, you may not have got groomed by, by people who are highly sophisticated and are intent on grooming young Western girls to come there to fart, to mother their children. You didn't get groomed by those people. You no doubt had a very stable and normal upbringing without the influence of gangs and groomers and psychotic murderers. But if my daughter, who's 14, got groomed by a load of terrorists, I would be out there trying to bring her home. I wouldn't be trying to... Just besmirch her as some sort of evil human being. She's not. She was a child. She was groomed, and she should come back to the country of her birth so that she can face. She's no longer a child, away, like everybody else. I'm sorry, well, she's twenty-two. It's years rather old. interesting. She's a year old woman that's been there for five years. And Mesa, if you go first, and then I'll bring you back in, Tasnim. Mesa, Mesa, you step in, and then I'll come to you. We're Mesa. no longer talking. We're no longer talking about a young lady. We're talking about a woman that's been in Syria and Iraq for uh, more than five years now. Uh, she's uh, 22 years old. Uh, we don't know what kind of uh, military and psychological training this young lady has gone through. Um, as I said, we have to listen to the authorities on this one. We have to listen to the experts. What? MI5 what? have said she's a real and credible threat. Um, her what? appeal for the loss of her citizenship uh, has gone all the way to the Supreme Court. So the British government has got the best legal advice on this. They've all agreed it's entirely appropriate that she lose her citizenship. The security services think that she's a threat. The British public no longer wants her to return back to the UK. So this is actually a pretty open and shut case. And we're being distracted by your, I'm sorry to say, absurd uh, statements where you say Shamima Begum's the victim in all this, when 6,000 Yazidi girls are still missing, uh, where young well, boys and men in the thousands were thrown victims down of and the ditched. Manchester bombing as well. We cannot forget Absolutely. the two victims of the Manchester bombing. Uh, but look, Tasnam, I want to give you the final word. You're obviously Shamima Begum's family lawyer. What's your plan now? What are you going to do next? What are the family expecting to happen? And do they have hope? Well, Shamima Begum's lawyer is um, Gareth Pierce. So they're bringing the case in um, the site courts and that's trundling on. The point that I wanted to come in on was that Shamima Begum was 15 when she joined a terrorist organization. That's true. 
But Mesa is an adult human being who joined uh, the YPG, which is a terrorist affiliate organization, according to Turkey and the United States, uh, which is affiliated to the PKK. I'm, I'm sorry, no, it's not. It's not the UK government also had arrested a number of people um, who joined the YPG. So are you suggesting on one hand that UK police were wrong to arrest people who joined the YPG, the same organization you joined? And you were an adult and you conducted military operations in a sovereign country, which is Syria, against against the sovereign country's interest. What you conducted, Mesa, in Syria was terrorism against Syria. All right, That's look, we're speaking about correct. we're speaking about Shamima Begum uh, tonight, but we will continue this debate. Thank you so much all for being here. That was Tasman Akumji, Shamima Begum's family lawyer, Chris Daw QC, the barrister and author of Justice on Trial, who says it's Shamima Begum who's the victim, and Mesa Gifford, who fought the Islamic State in Syria alongside Kurdish forces.